Yes, thank you, Asia Property, Terry and the team. It's been it's a pleasure that Sri Lanka's invited here for the first time, and we hope um, it's not the last. Um, I will share with you today some of the findings of our latest 2017 real estate market report. Uh, just briefly, RIU um, is now into the 15th year of operation in Sri Lanka. We're a UK-owned company. Um, the Sri Lanka operation is 15 years, and um, it's been an exciting journey. And uh, we were, uh, I think, I believe, the first to uh, specialize in real estate in Sri Lanka. If some of you are not familiar with um, Sri Lanka, as a macro overview, it's a population of some 21 million people, a GDP of just over 80,000 billion US dollars. Uh, the growth rate, if you can see the chart over there, has been uh, pretty strong in the last six or seven years, and uh, inflation is under control. Uh, per capita GDP is rising. I think the target is to get towards 5,000 um, US dollars in the next couple of years. And uh, you will note that Sri Lanka has enjoyed one of the highest literacy rates uh, of any country in the region. I think South Asia and Southeast Asia as well. Um, and generally it's been uh, quite a positive macro environment uh, in the post-independence era. Uh, the strongest growth was experienced um, after the end of the conflict. I think Sri Lanka was in the news for probably the wrong reasons for many years. There was a long um, conflict which was resolved in 2009. And what we have seen uh, is an economy really enjoying the benefits of a what we like to call a peace dividend. Uh, I'll just take you through some of the main real estate market segments. Uh, before I do that, sorry, just to also mention that Sri Lanka is a leading economy for the World Bank East of Doing Business Index. As you can see, um, for pretty much everything from registering a property to paying taxes to protecting minority investments, Sri Lanka is, um, by the regional standards, uh, number one. But of course, we feel there's, there's still a lot more room for improvement uh, to move towards a a more developed East Asian economy. Uh, the chart on the right is the foreign direct investment. Um, you see that there's a slight dip and I think that's really due to the political change which, which took place a couple of years ago. And we expect that to adjust in the next couple of years. Okay, we start with the luxury real estate market as you can see, um, just 10 years ago, there was hardly any inventory at all. We were looking at uh, below 1,000 luxury apartments in Colombo, the capital. But since the end of the war, we've seen um, a massive hike in the total inventory of luxury apartments. And uh, in fact, my research team is having to update this information almost on a weekly basis because what we see is uh, the launch of new luxury apartment projects coming on board um, almost every week. Um, there are many reasons for this, and hopefully I will touch on some of those in the next couple of slides. Right, so here's another look at some of the main um, luxury apartment projects that have uh, transformed the landscape, mainly in the capital, but also in some of the other largest cities as well. As you can see, in terms of number of units, uh, these are the projects that were completed already and in operation and occupation. Um, probably not huge by um, the regional standards, but there's uh, some of them are large. And what we see in the pipeline is that there are more more larger projects coming on board in the next three to four years. And many of these developers are in fact foreign developers from India, China, um, and the region, and also some of them from the Middle East and Europe. 
Uh, likewise, possibly more than half are also the local developers as well at the top end of the market. At RIU, we, 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 you know, because Sri Lanka doesn't actually provide us with information on real estate. Uh, in many countries, a central bank or some government agency will give us information on what's happening. But unfortunately, we've had to start from scratch. So we, we typically categorize luxury apartments into three, three separate tiers. And at the top, um, the local currency is roughly 150 Sri Lankan rupees per US dollar. So you're looking at a market where the top end is $200 per square foot and above, and then we have what we say is semi-luxury and below that affordable luxury. We do find a relationship between the price per square foot and the centrality of the location. So I think there was a lot of interesting things said earlier about location, convenience, etc. So we do find that um, this is the case in Colombo. But at the same time, there are exceptions. You, we find that there are some residential areas which enjoy uh, lots of greenery, lots of waterways, um, and, and these areas also fetch a premium. If you're a developer, you will find this kind of information interesting. We spend a lot of time analyzing the, um, the product mix. So you see that the three-bedroom um, product is the most popular. And that's the case um, overall. But if you look at the different tiers, you see that there are differences between the, the super luxury and uh, affordable segments. And if you're a developer again, you will find this kind of information interesting because we're looking at the size of an apartment. So typically, a three bedroom apartment would be something in the range of. Um, 1,300 square feet um, and above. I think the trend is moving towards smaller apartments and I think that's natural because as the city becomes more developed, uh, space becomes scarce, the land prices are es escalating and uh, apartment sizes tend to get smaller. So I think that's similar to what you find in uh, most of the other markets as well. Okay, a quick look at the demand side. So I've given you an overview of the supply. So here's the demand. At the top end, the tier one, uh, we've done our own research and we see that the, the people with about 350,000 US dollars to a million US dollars and above under their mattress um, are growing at about seven to 10% per annum. And at the moment we've estimated this to be around 35 to 40,000 people in Colombo. Many of them are dual citizens with residencies in, in uh, Western European countries like the UK. These kind of people do not typically go to a bank when they want to borrow or when they want to buy an apartment. So they would re re reshuffle their asset, uh, asset classes and uh, typically buy one or two apartments as an investment and sometimes to live in as well. Next we have Tier two, this is more of a um, buy to live um, pro uh, profile. And, and these people are about 10% of the Colombo city population. Again, growing at a very encouraging and healthy 10% um, according to estimates. And these people do tend to use bank, uh, bank borrowing as well. Thirdly, we have tier three. This we've estimated at 10% of the entire Colombo district population. So that's quite a large number. So looking at something like up to 700,000 people, this is a very steady market. So looking at prices starting from 100,000 um, US dollars, and this is what you would uh, define as an affordable luxury apartment. They typically have the swimming pool, the gym, but maybe smaller units. Um, and may not enjoy the, the prime location as tier one does. A very important driver of the market has been the uh, diaspora, the non-resident Sri Lankans. And according to our own research, we've estimated this at two million. 
these people account for up to 30% of the market, especially towards the top end. And some of the more mature markets are like the UK, where there are many Sri Lankan doctors, lawyers, etc., who've been there for many generations uh, since the 1950s uh, and 60s. And, and more of the emerging diaspora demand from places like Australia. Um, last but not least is the growing participation of uh, people without a connection to Sri Lanka, so foreigners, as it were. So um, we found that this market is currently between 5 and 7%, but there's a lot of potential for growth, and we see that many people are, um, are coming into the market and finding out about the tax and the regulatory um, environment because they're very serious about investing. A quick look at the commercial market. Um, the commercial market really has been a victim of the success of the residential market because um, especially the foreign investors have enjoyed very good and quick returns on the residential space. As a result, if you go to Colombo, you'll see that the number of grade A office space buildings um, has remained pretty static over the last 10 years. So anyone who's been recently will know that the World Trade Center is still the largest and the most expensive, and that's been there for something like uh, more than 20 years. So there hasn't been much activity, unfortunately, and as a result, we've seen um, residential houses in central areas being converted into office spaces. Here's a quick look at uh, cumulative supply. We're looking at um, something like three, three and a half million square feet of commercial space at the top end of the market, um, which is well below what we would expect the market can absorb at this point in time. And the World Trade Center it leads the pack in terms of prices, etc. Occupancy is pretty much at 100% due to the lack of supply. So if you're a developer and, you, and, you, and you're into commercial space, this is a very interesting market to look at. Um, and um, there are still many opportunities here. A quick look at retail malls. Um, I think the growth in tourism has been the main driver to, um, to sustain this market because the local traffic alone with the high-end malls that were in stock in terms of square foot uh, was probably sufficient until we had a massive hike in tourism and uh, as a result there's a huge demand for malls in Colombo and uh, it's very very difficult at the moment to find if you're a retailer it's very difficult to find mall space uh, in most of the central malls and what we see now is that quite a few are under construction we've done our own research into the type of shopping that people do um, I think it's pretty normal by international comparisons on the right, you see a chart which shows you the, the retail mall stock. The, the main um, addition, which comes in a couple of years, is Shangri-La. It's a very large development uh, in prime Colombo, and, and there's a very large mall uh, coming up there. And, and there's, a, there's a, um, quite a sharp incline in future mall space. But we feel there are still many opportunities for mall developers if you find the right location. Um, you may not want to go for the scale, but um, there's definitely more space for new developers. A quick look at the pricing. Um, you see the Dutch hospital. And do not get alarmed. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, people being injured or going to because they're ill. There's actually a a renovated um, colonial period architecture, which uh, I hope you will get to see sometime. It's very nice. Okay, now we come to the hike in land prices. It's quite astonishing that um, almost every week we're finding land prices in Colombo going up and the deals that people close, our agents, etc., um, are, are actually off the charts and they don't always res uh, you know represent any logic so sometimes you have a plot of land in a very central area 
and uh, somebody wants it, they'll pay um, something which is, you know, uh, not in line with the trend. What you see here is, so we're looking at something like 20 million rupees. I think uh, 200,000 US dollars per perch in prime Colombo, and that's the average. So there are some plots which enjoy like a seafront, ocean views, etc., which are more than two or three times that amount. Uh, so it's, it's really been a, a story of scarcity of land um, and uh, the end of horizontal development and, and the rapid rise of vertical living um, and development. I think we see this one as the cross-fertilizing um, segment. We do look at tourism as well as part of our real estate um, research because developers also enjoy uh, picking up properties on the beach, etc., especially in Sri Lanka. And I think here, this is the main success story which has many benefits for the other segments as well. Many people, they tend to come to Sri Lanka on holiday, they fall in love with the place, they, they, they want to look at ways they can do business, they want to own property, and the more people that come in each year, I think helps to generate more interest. I think my time's up, so I have to rush this one. Um, I think this is in keeping with the discussion in the morning about the, uh, this is the Chinese initiative, uh, which is uh, very exciting. Uh, it's adding, it's a game changer in terms of what it does for the city of Colombo and the country as a whole. And I would even argue the entire South Asia region the land reclamation is, um, I think it was mentioned, almost 270 hectares of land reclaimed from the ocean in uh, probably in the most prime location as far as real estate is concerned. Um, it will transform the way the, 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 the capital um, moves forward. It will be a financial city. Uh, it's a joint venture between the Sri Lankan government and the Chinese government, uh, China engineering uh, cooperation is the uh, the main um, the driver of this project, and we're very excited about this one. If anyone wants to find out more, we'd be happy to to oblige. Um, and that's the the vision. So the port city is really looking at getting all the millionaires, the billionaires in the region, to come and live there. There'll be uh, you know world class schools, hospitals, etc., um, which will reshape the way Sri Lanka is positioned uh, as we move forward in the next five years. This is a very long-term project. It is uh, the first time we've seen, seen zone developments in Sri Lanka. So um, it will have different areas for recreation, um, central park living, commercial, tourism, etc. And yeah, as I said, it is a long-term project. There are many opportunities, and um, we're looking at the next 20, 25 years um, for the entire project to be, I think, looking like a, a mini Singapore. So we, I will end with that, just to say that RIU is into doing market research, feasibility studies, advisory work, etc. And uh, we're happy to answer any questions from anyone. Thank you very much.